Hi, and welcome to Twisted Tech TV. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Kevin. Hi, I'm one of your other hosts. My name is Juan. Today, our first topic is Windows Vista. As many of you probably know, later this year, Microsoft will be releasing the newest version of their Windows operating system, called Windows Vista, to OEM manufacturers. Then in early 2007, Vista will also become available to retail customers. I recently took a look at the first public beta of Windows Vista. And it, they had some interesting things to, to show me, Swan. Hmm, well, uh, what sort of things do you see? I understand uh, you did some sort of smoke test on one of our machines. Actually, I didn't smoke anything. It, it worked <laughs> pretty well. The first thing I tried was to upgrade Windows XP, Service Pack 2, to Windows Vista. Hmm. And that went reasonably well. When you first put in the, the disk for Windows Vista and you're doing an upgrade, there's an upgrade advisor that, that appears. And what it does is it looks through your operating system, your, your existing Windows XP, say, and it looks at your hardware. And if there are any pro potential problem spots, it'll give you a warning about those. For example, in my case, it warns me that my, uh, my antivirus program was mm -hmm. incompatible, at least with the beta version of Windows Vista. Uh -huh. It also let me know that I needed an updated driver for the wireless uh, interface card. Wow. That Sounds really neat. It sounds like they kind of tied together elements of the event log and um, device manager. Instead of digging for the information, they actually kind of just give it to you out front? Yes. Oh, um, nice. Nice. Earlier versions of Windows did this to some extent also, mm -hmm. but Windows Vista seems to provide a more comprehensive overview of potential problems when you're doing the upgrade. Hey, it cuts down tech support calls, huh? Uh, hopefully so. <laughs> it also warned me, in my case, that my graphics card might not be quite up to snuff. Mm. Windows Vista has a new graphical interface theme called Aero. I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. And it's like a graphics designer's gr dream. It's got beautiful glass, stained glass looking interface. There's like shaded things in the background. The buttons look like they're made of stained glass with a light shining through. Part of the window panes are transparent and you can adjust the transparency level. It's really quite attractive. When I installed Windows Vista by upgrading from Windows XP, that went pretty well, except when I restarted the computer, after I had gotten the new driver for the wireless interface card, starting Windows was really no problem. However, I noticed that some of my existing software on the old XP installation still didn't work properly, which the advisor had warned me of. Of mm. course, that's understandable. This is just a beta version of Windows Vista. Mm -hmm. Why would most people want to use Windows Vista over Windows XP at this point? Well, if you've got a brand new, spanking new computer with all the newest graphics drivers and fast hard drives uh -huh. and, and lots of RAM, and you want a more user-friendly Windows experience, uh -huh. Windows Vista actually has that for you. Okay. Uh, okay. There are a lot more wizards. Mm -hmm. If you're not technically savvy, Windows Vista is possibly one of the most helpful versions of Windows around. See, yeah, it sounded like it was very nice with the, what did you call it again? Um, it was well, the Upgrade the, Advisor uh, was a upgrade start. Upgrade Advisor, yes. Uh -huh. There's okay. also a performance measurement tool that comes up with your, with your uh, starting page for Windows. Mm. You can quickly determine if any aspect of your computer is causing performance problems. Uh -huh. For example, if one of the drivers is not working as well as maybe it should, if it's not as efficient as it should be, it'll warn you that you might need to get new drivers. I see. If there's a piece of software that is automatically starting with Windows, maybe doesn't need to run or is taking up a lot of resources, mm -hmm. it will warn you that that is, cause, is, is dragging the system down. Mm -hmm. So even people who don't know how to go through the registry or go through the services wizard and see what all started, this gives them a very friendly starting point to sort of try to troubleshoot any performance issues that they're running up against. When the final version is released, even people who have the older computers will probably have the option to install and completely bypass the Aero uh, theme so mm -hmm. that they can get at least reasonable performance even though they may not have the highest end graphics card. That would be nice. Don't know if I want to upgrade my computer for it. So, exactly. Although you know, new operating system. Oh, I need a new computer. Well, Swan, uh, that's about all I have to say about Windows Vista. Tell us about browser wars. Well, um, see, so you have several big browsers right now. You have Internet Explorer, 
you have Opera, you have Firefox, um, there's also Flock. Um, these are the main browsers currently, uh, Internet Explorer being the most popular, of course. Uh, would you say that's because of quality or ease of, or, or availability? Uh, definitely availability. Um, Internet Explorer is, uh, has gotten quite long in the tooth. Uh, Microsoft has had some security issues lately due to flack um, from the uh, <laughs> users and um, community. It also. seems to have taken a bit of a beating from a lot of the uh, web developers too. Yes, um, Internet Explorer is not the best in terms of supporting web development features, uh, in terms of supporting web standards, essentially. Uh, we're talking about CSS and um, different ways of developing websites. Although, in, in, in point of fairness, Internet Explorer 7 does promise to address a lot of those concerns, if not all of them. Uh, yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the other browsers, Swan? What do they have that would make me pick one of them over Internet Explorer, which is easily available? Well, um, functionality for one. Uh, how about, uh, say, say Firefox? Um, if you, if you use Mozilla's Firefox, you can see that they have plenty of extensions. Uh, what extensions are? Uh, they're essentially little, little um, plugins that you can install into your Firefox browser that extend the functionality. I can have an extension, say, to tell me the weather in my local region. I don't know uh, whether I want that or not. <laughs> yeah, it's been over 100 uh, the last few days here. Yes, yes, it has um, plenty of functionality. Uh, if you're a web developer, you can install extensions that can help you develop in JavaScript and CSS and HTML code. Um, it, it, it really has an extension for just about anything that you can think of. Um, there are literally hundreds of extensions available on a Mozilla.org website. And um, also, if you go to other extension sites, some individual authors have their own pages, and um, they're, they're just tons. And tons. Firefox itself is free. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the plugins are all free, or uh, most for, of them? For the most part. I would say 99.9%. .9%. Um, I've seen very few that charge any money at all. And if they do, it's something like $5, 10 OK. Uh, you also mentioned Opera as one of the uh, more commonly used browsers. What does yeah. Opera add to the, to the mix? Well, um, you know, one of the main differences between the